we have another uh, field effect transistor circuit here. Um, this is a little bit different in that the gate voltage is now being established by a voltage divider between our positive voltage source and ground. And we're asked to go through and determine the, operate, the region of operation and to determine the current flowing through the transistor and VGS and VDS and anything else we think might be interesting. So let's go ahead and get started here. We're given these values. Again, we're going to assume that the um, early effect or the uh, channel length modulation effect can be neglected. And what do we know? Well, we know that with this voltage divider here, the gate voltage is established at, just write it here, V sub G is equal to 10 times. Now, both of these resistors are the same, so we know that the voltage here is going to be 5 volts, or 10 over 10 plus 10. So V sub G equals 5 volts here. We know that the current going into the gate is 0. Um, what else do we know? Do we know what VGS is? Well, given this, the uh, resistor here on the source, S is not tied to ground now. The source is lifted above ground, and the answer is no, we don't know what the voltage is here. Similarly, we don't know what the voltage is here, nor will we until we know what I sub D is. So what do we know? Well, we can write expressions for V sub S. V sub S is going to equal just R sub S times I sub D. We know that I sub D will be flowing through here like this. And that V sub S then will equal 6,000 ohms times I sub D in amps. Or we can also write this. We can say let's just use um, milliamps and kiloohms and volts as our units. And then this would also, we could write this also as... Um, 6 times I sub D, understanding that I sub D will be in milliamps because R sub S is in kiloohms. We also can write an expression for V sub D. V sub D similarly is going to be the 10 volts, that's a D, the 10 volts minus 6 times I sub D. Now, because we don't know these relative values, we don't really know whether this is operating in the triode region or the saturation region. We're pretty confident that the diode is, or that the transistor is at least on and that it's not in the cutoff region because we've got five volts at the gate. So let's assume, we can either assume triode or we can assume saturation and then go through the calculations and then check to see whether our assumptions may, are consistent with the circuit or not. The calculations involving or f the calculations associated with saturation are a lot less complicated than the, than the um, calculations associated with the triad region. So let's just guess that we are in the saturation. Guess saturation. Which means then that I sub D is equal to 1 half K sub N prime W over L times the GS minus VT quantity squared, which then is equal to, or we can then write that I sub D then is equal to one half. Now, K sub N prime W over L is given to us as one milliamp per volt squared. So this is already given in units of milliamps, kiloohms, and volts. And so we just go ahead and write that in there. 1 half times 1 times, all right, VGS. Well, VGS, oh, we don't really have VGS. Let's write an expression for VGS. We know V sub G is 5. VGS then is going to equal the voltage of the gate, 5 minus the voltage of the source. The voltage of the source in milliamps and kiloohms is 6 I sub D. So coming back up here, we've got then VGS, which we now have is 5 minus 6 I sub D, minus V sub T, which we're told is 1, quantity squared, gives us the expression for the current flowing through this transistor if it is in the saturation region. Now we can go ahead and 5 minus 1 is 4, so we've got then that this is equal to 1 half times 4 minus 6 I sub D, quantity squared. Expanding this right side, we get then that I sub D 
is equal to 8 minus 24i sub d plus 18i sub d quantity squared. Now go ahead and plug that into the, to, uh, not the quadratic e equation, the quadratic formula, and we get two different values for I sub D. We get that I sub D can either equal 0 0.89 milliamps or I sub D can equal 0 0.5 milliamps. Now you have to look at these and, and determine just what is it, do either of these make sense? Let's look first at this 0.89 milliamps. If we had 0.89 milliamps flowing through here, what would the voltage be at the source? Well, we know that V sub S would be 6,000 or 6 times uh, I sub D in milliamps. So V sub S then would equal um, 6 times 0.89. That equals um, 5.34 volts. Now, is that plausible? If I've got 5 volts here and 5.89 volts here, that would suggest that VGS would be 5 minus 5.34 volts. That would suggest that VGS was a negative 0.34 volts. That doesn't make sense. If that was the case, this transistor wouldn't even be on, and there wouldn't be any current flowing through it. So we can eliminate that option. We know then that I sub D is equal to 5 milliamps. Now with I sub D equaling 5 milliamps, then what is V sub S? So at I sub D equaling 5 milliamps, then V sub S is going to equal 0, going up 0.5 times uh, 6 kilo ohms. V sub S then would be 3 volts. With V sub S 3 volts, what does that make VGS? V, oops, VGS would then be V sub G, which is 5, minus V sub S, which is 3. That gives us a VGS of 2 volts. Now does that make our assumption that, uh, well let's, let's go ahead and calculate VDS first of all. So VDS, V sub D rather, let's call V sub D would be 10 minus 6 times the 0.5 or 10 minus 3, V sub D would be 7 volts and VDS then would be 7 minus the V sub S, what do we say V sub S was 3, 7 minus 3 equals 4 volts. So now we've got VDS equaling 4 volts, VGS equaling 2 volts, and sure enough, VDS is greater than VGS minus uh, V sub T. VGS was what, 3 volts? Uh, 2 volts. VGS is 2 volts minus 1 is 1 volt. So VDS4 is greater than 1, 1 volt. And our guess that we were in the saturation region was correct. And all these different values that we calculated are correct also.